Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in the game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Welcome to Football Game Plans Talking with TD. I'm your host, Teron Davenport. Welcome to footballgameplan.com. I am Teron Davenport talking with TD. We're going to talk with the DBs here. We're going to bring in Missouri Western corner, Mike, not Michael, Mike Jordan. Mike, what's good with you, man? How you doing? I'm doing really well. I appreciate you coming on, and I'm glad that your agent, Greg Linton, was able to make this happen because I was really impressed with you at the Shrine Week practices. Uh, one of the plays that I saw you make it, Vernon Adams' interception on, on the post, you, you knocked the ball out, and one of the corners from Colorado intercepted it, and that was one of the few interceptions Adams threw that week. So I, I like your effort. I like what you bring to the table as far as length and ball skills. So let's get right into that part of your football game. I mean, 16 career interceptions, 22 pass breakups this past season, five interceptions. What is it that allows you to get to the football and why you're so addicted to INTs? Uh, I think a lot of the me uh, playing receiver basically my whole career prior to so going up and getting the ball natural for me. I really, I don't even think about it. Nature for me. That's just something that, uh, something that I lean on definitely because when, when the ball's in the air, like some DBs say they think it's theirs, I, I, I really, pride myself on, you know, it's it's just as much my ball as it is his, so uh, that's my goal to come down with it. Yeah, it, you mentioned playing receiver, and it, it's almost like that's a major advantage when you have a DB that played receiver. Can you elaborate on that? It's just what it is that, that allows you to, you know, pattern match and just know, like, pick up signals and, and signs and things from a receiver having played the position before? Yeah, it's just Okay, you 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 learn so much about playing receiver that that you never really forget those things. Like I always joke about my coach, like yeah, I can go, I can play corner for you. I mean, I can play receiver for you right now. Like it's nothing. And you just those kind of things you really you don't lose. You know, it's just you kind of know where where breaking points are and just different things like that. And that's only gonna help you in learning a new position in corner. So I just kind of mesh that all together in my my overall game. Yeah, that makes sense. And like I said, watching you at Shrine Week, and one-on-ones and, and just in, in team period, everything, I was really impressed. What was some of the feedback you got from some of the NFL uh, personnel folks while you were out there? Uh, a lot of the scouts felt as if as the week went on, I, I got better. And that's what was a, that was the main thing that they liked about me because I kind of, they can see it in me that I, I got more comfortable in. I just I, I got way better in the scheme and all that, so that that's just a lot of the feedback that I got that I continue to improve. There was another guy that did the same thing uh, as the week went on and through the whole All Star circuit. He just continued to get better and better, and he was eventually picked by the Cleveland Browns and actually uh, <laughs> another client of uh, Greg Linton. So, what was some of the feedback that you were able to get from Pierre Desir? Oh, he was, Pierre was like, he's kind of like a big brother to me throughout that process because he's kind of just making me more comfortable telling me that, uh, you know, just be be comfortable and be confident in what you're doing because you're there for a reason just like anybody else. So he just basically let me know that I belong and that, that kind of played a big role in my confidence knowing that uh, there's other people who know that I belong not other than myself. So it kind of just made me more confident. It's funny how confidence could could help you so much as a player, especially as a DB, man. That's that's something you have to have. You know, you're out there on oh, the yeah, for sure. one-on-one. Now, you have the bloodlines, too. You have an older brother that, that played in football, and, and he was one of the reasons why you started playing. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, that's correct. So he, he went he went on. He, he had a, 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 bit, a bit of time with the Jaguars, right, Jacksonville? Yep. As far as that step was for him, uh, 
did he share just what some of the major things that he had to overcome? Because he made a jump too. So was he able to share some of that with you? Uh, he really, the main thing he told me was it's going to be hard and it's going to be 10 times harder because I'm coming from a small school. So I'm already going to be looked down upon. And uh, really just the same thing, just remain confident and stay healthy because that's the only thing. Other than that, he, he said he, he knows I'll be fine. There you go. Now, looking at your ability as a player, I mean, you're a guy a lot of people may not know about. So take this opportunity. Just let people know what you bring as a corner. What, what are your strengths? Uh, definitely my ball skills. I think that's that's obviously my number one strength. And two, it's just, I'm, I'm extremely competitive and I'm going to compete. So I feel like if a guy gets me on a route, you know what I mean, for whatever play and practice, it's definitely going to be you know, I just I pride myself on being the competitor that I am, and uh, also I'm gonna give my my uh, highest of my effort every rep that I'm out there, and giving everything to the organization that that takes a chance on me. As far as playing inside, outside, do you have a preference? Are you confident in your ability to bump inside and play the, the you know cover the slot receivers as well? Uh, I haven't done it a whole lot, but I'm I'm definitely confident in the fact that I can do it. I played a little safety this year as well. I'm growing confidence in that, so it's just it, it's just a process. But as far as being on the outside of that corner, uh, yeah, I'm definitely I definitely feel comfortable with doing that. When you're lining up outside, sometimes it's it's just you and the receiver, and that receiver could be a burner. You had a really uh-huh. good game against a burner that a lot of. Arizona Cardinals fans, I'm sure they they know about John Brown and NFL fans. Period. Talk about yeah. that matchup. I mean, it, that was your sophomore year. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. So as a sophomore, you're going against a guy who was ended up being drafted. So how did that matchup go, and what was the mindset, and you know everything going into that week? Uh, it was it's actually crazy. I remember like it was yesterday, just the whole week of practice because my coach. Head coach just kept telling me, he always kind of messed with me when we have a big player coming up, like a big time player. And, uh, he just kept saying how fast John Brown was and if I was going to be able to cover him and just a bunch of stuff. I was kind of, I guess he's trying to get under my skin, which he kind of succeeded in doing. But John Brown, I mean, he's as advertised. Dude is a blazer. So I just kind of had to adjust, you know, but. I ended up playing pretty well against him. Got a couple PBUs, and I ended up I ended up doing pretty well against him. When you're going against a speed guy like that, I mean, you have you have legitimate speed. You have sufficient speed, but when you're going against a pure blazer like that, how do you keep from allowing him to get behind you and make plays down the field? Um. You just kind of got to know who the guy is. Like with with, with John Brown, you know, you can kind of well, like my mental going into that game is okay. I might have to open up a step earlier, but then again, I can get my foot planted and I can come down hard off. It's going down, let's say, for an out route or something like. That. So it was just kind of just it, it was all mental. It was, look at it when going against a, a guy who might be faster than you. So looking at your pro day, you know, you had a, a pretty good show and at your pro day, a good uh, three cone. As you mentioned, it was 6.8 and 4.19 in the short shuttle. So obviously you were impressed. Uh, you were impressive to the scouts and uh, the field drills. How did they uh, feel about you in the field drills and what were some of the things that, that they told you at the pro day? Uh, I got told by, I think it was a couple scouts, probably three scouts, that I looked very well in the uh, in my ball drill, that was definitely my highlight of my day. So, that, I mean, and that's what is what I wanted to do because at the end of the day, it's about being a football player. You know, all the testing is good, but that's what it's about and showing how well you can move around. And that's what I wanted to do was show the scouts that that I could backpedal and turn my hips and, and go high point the ball. Definitely important. And a part of being a football player, a complete football player, is contributing on special teams. How did your role on special teams uh, evolve at Missouri Western? Uh, I, since my freshman year, I've always played special teams, and uh, as of course, as the time went on, it kind of I played less of a role because you know they just wanted me more on defense. But 
I mean, it's, I've always been on hands team and punt, punt return, uh, kickoff return. I really play every special team since I've been here. There you go. Now, as far as just from, from here on out, I mean, you got the draft coming in, in, in just just over a month. What's uh, on your schedule? What's on your agenda between now and then? Uh, Right now, it's just I'm going to continue to work out. And uh, I got a couple workouts set up. So really just grind into those, come around, and try not to think about the draft day. There you have it. Mike, I appreciate you coming on. We'll definitely uh, have to get you back on or get back in touch with you as as the process goes on and, and even after the draft when you're playing on Sundays, man. Thanks a lot for coming on. All right. Thank you for having me. That wraps up this edition of Talking with TD. Be sure to check out all of my interview segments at footballgameplan.com slash talking with TD. If you have any questions or people you want me to sit down with, hit me up on Twitter at tdavenport underscore NFL.